Last example in 5.2 here, number four, what we're going to look at is the, the tricky part, honestly. Um, going from a graph to an equation typically is harder. Um, what is nice is that A, B, and D are consistently the same um, from sine to cosine. It's the C, the phase shift, um, that is going to change that. And um, I am going to let you do C on your own. Um, that would just be uh, using your calculator, right? Making sure, and one thing that I would like to write here, using calculus, make sure I spell that right, um, is check your window settings. Um, if you want to make sure that you've done this correctly, and I'll put them, I'll put what they should be for this question. Um, the division is always important. So we see that pi over three is the tick. That means this is negative pi over three. It means that that's negative two pi over three. So the settings that we're worried about are x min, x max, um, x scale, then y min, y max, and y scale. Um, the x min, therefore, is going to be negative 2 pi. And I'll write it in like you could put on your calculator, negative 2 pi divided by 3. My x max um, is going to be, now I would probably just go to 2 pi. Um, but technically, that's 2 pi plus pi uh, divided by 3. Uh, now, again, you can type that in as I put it into your calculator, and that'll work fine. X scale is going to be pi over 3, and that will put, uh, you know, the ticks where I've written or drawn, I guess, those dark black lines. Um, for Y min, a little bit easier, I think. Each of these is 1, so that's going to be negative 2, positive 6, and maybe I'll put, that makes it look a little bit weird, so Y min is negative 2. Um, and then finally, the Y scale is just 1. Now, all of that is great to verify using your calculator, but we, we kind of have to get our solution first. And the easiest way of doing that by far um, is to take a look at the graph and ultimately determine, at least to begin with, three things. The maximum, the minimum, and the period. So the maximum and the minimum are referring to Y values. The maximum on this graph is positive 4. The minimum on this graph is 0. The period of this graph is a little bit trickier. And I want to show the easiest way of doing that by far is to take the second crest and subtract the value of the first crest. Or you can use the trough, you can use any point. And I would like to show that this black line that I've just drawn will consistently show that function repeating again and again and again and again. So that's the distance from crest to crest or from trough to trough or from trough to trough back here or this crest to this crest. But I, I do want to leave it up up there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that in as delta x. Now, in that context, this is x final and this is x initial. So the change in x or the period of this function is going to be for this particular graph, pi minus pi over 3 which is to say 2 pi over 3. Now, armed with that information, what we can do is we can come up or we can use those formulas we have for our A value, which is max minus min over 2, and I'll do that in a minute here. Uh, the D value, which is max plus min over 2, and the B value, or the absolute value of the B value, which is period, oops, sorry, that's 2 pi divided by the period. All right, that is a manipulation of the formula that we've used in uh, 5.1. All right, using that or those equations, we can determine that A is 4 minus 0 over 2. So A is 2. We have that D is equal to 4 plus 0 over 2. This is just a coincidence that those are the same values. And then finally, the absolute value of B is 2 pi divided by our period, which we determined to be 2 pi over 3. Uh, we have to work with that a little bit. That's 2 pi multiplied by 3 over 2 pi. So dividing by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. The 2 pi's cancel, and then we get that b is 3. Now for the fun part, which is the c value. And that does make these questions trickier. There's no denying that. But if I track back up to the graph, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw what y equals sine x should look like. And it's definitely a little bit, you know, that pi over 2 is in a bit of a weird spot, but something like this, give or take again. We're not too worried about the preciseness of it. But what is really important is that what I've drawn in red passes through the equilibrium line, the vertical displacement at the origin, at 0. But our graph doesn't. If I drew the y equals d line on that graph, then what we see happening, let me get rid of some of the other stuff that's happening here. It's just a little bit too busy for me. Um, hopefully what we can see happening is in order to make that red line start where the blue line does, 
I would have to shift that red line C units to the right, which is that piece right there. So again, ignoring the difference in amplitude and certainly the vertical displacement, in order for my standard sign graph to look like what I have above, I have to shift it that many units to the right until it lines up. Now, there is a bit of a problem here, and I'm going to put a lot of stuff on here now that I just described that this could be C. And that is perfectly acceptable. But again, moving that green or that red line, sorry, is I could also move it all the way over here. So there's another C value, this right there. Now, the difference in those C values is the period of the function. And what does make this frustrating is we are going to have to re-examine that when we talk about Y equals cos X. Sorry about that reveal on the notes. I know it can make it a really, really messy. Um, but basically what we're going to work with now is that top C value right here is one half of the division along our X line. So C is going to equal to pi over six to the right, right? That's half of pi over three. Now, armed with that information, we are able to do this for sine now. So if I look at Y equals A times the sine of B times X minus C plus D, we can identify that that equation is Y equals two times the sine of three times X minus pi over six plus two. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna re-examine this with cos. All right, so a little jarring, I know going back, just to erase some stuff there. Um, we are gonna use the same values we already determined. And I think that is, again, worth reiterating that A, B, and D are consistent from sine to cosine. So A is still two, B is still three, and D is still two as well. The difference though is the phase shift because my standard graph of cos starts at a maximum and then reaches negative one at pi and then a back at two pi. And it's gonna look a little bit ugly here. I should have chose a different color. Maybe I'll switch that after I'm done. And I'm definitely making that just kind of as simple as I can. Um, what we're gonna work with then is the idea is how do I translate, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, that red graph to the blue graph and similar to cos or similar to sine, sorry, uh, is I can just take this red graph and shift it so that the maximum lines up with the maximum on my transform version. Now, what we're looking at then is in order for that max to be at this location right here, we had to shift our graph C units to the right. Similar to sine, there are a couple other choices as well. But typically when we give phase shift, we wanna give the smallest positive value. And if I drop that green arrow down to the X axis, other than my bad drawing skills, we can see that that C value is pi over three to the right. And that is frustrating for a lot of students that when we use cos, so Y equals A times the cos of <clears throat> B times X minus C plus D, then for cos, C is equal to pi over three. Um, and that is just because sine and cos are maybe offset is some of the language we can use. Um, and if you do take further math courses, you'll learn how to quickly transform from sine to cos. And it just involves a translation of pi over two. But for us, this is the information we need. So I'm gonna say that Y is equal to two times the cos of two times X minus pi over three plus two. I'm going to pause this recording again. I'd like you to grab your calculators and put those two functions in. Okay, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, and I know that's kind of a lot to take in all at once, but I'm going to talk you kind of through piece by piece what I've done. Uh, I've put in my two equations into my Y1 and my Y2 just to confirm that they are the same. You have to ensure that your calculator is in radian mode because that is the mode for this question. Um, and the window. Uh, I changed. Uh, I made the window, the, the settings that we identified in the question. And the advantage to that is now my window settings are going to show me exactly what I was looking at in the question. And we can confirm that we are determining the true graphs. So once all of that is in there, when I hit graph, the blue line is the Y1 piece right there. Oh, I didn't think that would interrupt the graphing, but it did. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> I have to get rid of that now. There we go. Uh, I'm going to restart the graphing here. Sorry about that. So the blue line is Y1. That's the two times the sine and then the three and so on. And if you compare that against your notes, you do see that we're getting the graph um, that we were shown. Uh, and then what's going to happen is we're going to see a red line almost like highlighting that. 
Um, and that is the same graph, just using cos instead of sine. Um, this is a great way to confirm that you've done these questions correctly. Um, it is a little bit finicky with the X scale or the X min, the X max and so on. Um, but I think it's worth the extra effort. And technology is a really, really powerful piece of modeling with trig function and basically five point uh, two. All right, again, the, the assignment is up here. Oh, we are actually chopping example five off. Sorry about that. I forgot that that was in there. Uh, we're just trying to prioritize a little bit so we can finish the course in the time that we have. So take a look at the 5.2 assignment, chip away at it, and please do email if you have any questions.